Okay, so the first thing, the first concept that we're going to learn today is going to be a variable, okay? Variables. What does that mean? Variable. Variable means, let's see, uh, here, define variable. Let's see what it, the, the actual mean. No, this is in a Perl, fuck this. Oh my God, English, please, English. Something that changes or that can be changed. Okay, so for example, if we were thinking, let's think on math for a second. If we were thinking in math, what do you think a variable would be? I think a variable could be A. And let's say that A can be changed. This means A means nothing. And now A, let's change it to two. So before A didn't exist, now A exists. And now I said, fuck it, A is equal to true. I just made it. And maybe I can do, I don't know, I wanna change that. And I wanna say 221. I can do that. That is a variable, no problem. Now let's create another variable. Um, let's do, fucking me, what is the keyword? Fucking piece of shit. Um, B will be A minus five. All right, so start doing your calculations. How much would B be? Crazy, no? And let's just, uh, you know what? Fuck it. We are too lazy for this because programming is for lazy people. So let's just console log. Again, remember, console log, it just puts shit here, okay? We're going to understand what the things mean and we're, the parentheses mean, and we're going to understand why you have to put a dot here instead of just doing this. Like, this would be so much better. This is ugly as fuck. Okay, so we're going to understand all that later. All right, so let's console log A. No, let's console log B to see what is the value of B because I don't want to do this calculation. I want JavaScript to do it for me. Okay, so let's see. And let's run this thing. 216. Hmm, interesting. Look at how cool that is. I just write something and the language will understand it. Congratulations, you have your first variable. That's how we see it is. That's how we see it is to make a variable on JavaScript. Now, this is not the best JavaScript code because as you know, a JavaScript is a programming language, right? Now, um, programming languages, just like normal languages, they have some rules, they have some grammar that we have to follow. Okay, and in the case of JavaScript, here we just spotted something that is kind of fucked about JavaScript. And the problem with JavaScript is that JavaScript will let you do bad stuff. JavaScript is like a father that doesn't discipline his children. Okay, and that means that, uh, for example, you can write A equals like this, and JavaScript will just try as hard as he can to understand you. He will not judge you, he will just love you, he will try to just understand you and he will try his hardest to execute while you put there, even if it's not in the best grammar possible. So if we wanna make it on the best grammar possible, what we need to do and what we need to change here is a couple of things. As you can see, we have something on line one, two, and three. Usually in programming land, everything goes on a different line. Okay, you cannot, I mean, maybe you could because JavaScript is disgusting. But if you do this, we might have an error. I don't know, maybe we'll have an error, maybe we won't. Yeah, we have an error, there you go. Imagine if we didn't have an error, it would be embarrassing for JavaScript. All right, so as you can see, we have to write everything on a separate line. Every instruction will be on a separate line. Now, those lines, instead of calling them lines, let's just call them expressions. Okay, every expression has to be on one line. Every instruction has to be on one line. And the way that we define how one expression ends is by doing this. I know that you know Cacao Talk and you have taken Cacao Talk and you know CSS. And in CSS, we also have the same thing. We have to put a semicolon at the end of all the CSS style properties. It's the same thing in JavaScript, except that it has to be on the instructions okay so this is just one example of the grammar in javascript now another grammar is that we should not just start a variable like this okay we should not 
And why is that? This is why, because maybe it will be too advanced to tell that now, but it's because there are two kinds of variables and we will see this later. But basically, uh, it's not a good practice to do this like that, okay? What we need to do is we need to add something at the beginning of this file, okay? Uh, sorry, not at the beginning of the file, at the beginning of the variable. And this brings me to my next point. When you wanna create a variable, basically, this is how it works. First thing, you create it. Oh, I have the lines here. First, you create the variable, then you initialize it, and then you use it, okay? This is very simple things. You create, you initialize, and you use. Sometimes you can create and initialize at the same time, and then later on, you can use them, okay? So in this case, here I'm creating A, and I am initializing it with a number of two to one, okay? This is an initialization. It can be done on the same line. And later on, I am using it, okay? The rule is that before you initialize a variable, you need to put these words in front of it, okay? I knew what LAT mean, meant, I forgot let meaning. JS, I really, I, it's like a, so stupid. Uh, let, um, let, I don't know what that means. Oh, explanation for the name. Let, it's a mathematical statement. Yep, I'm more confused than before. So just don't Google this thing, <laughs> just whatever. You need, to, you need to put let on top of this. And we're going to understand why in the next video. Why should we say let and not the other one? There is another one. But we need to understand why in the next video. So let's follow the grammar and let's do this. Let. Now you will say, yo, Nicolas, you are not using let over here. Let. And the reason why I'm not doing that is because you don't need to put let when you initialize or create the variable. You don't need to put let when you use it. When you use it, it's already created, so you can just reference it, okay? I am using it in the line number two, and I don't have to put let because in the line number one, I have declared it, I initialized it. Now, if I remove these things and I put it as you had it before, it's like, I already initialized it and I'm just using it and that is not good, all right? It's not good at all. That shouldn't be what I, I should do, okay? So first, remember, I initialize, also create, and then I can use, okay? And because it's a variable, like we said, a variable changes, okay? You can change because a variable is something that varies. We can also change A and we can say, for example, A equals four. Okay, and now we're gonna console log A and see what happens. So we're gonna run this thing and we'll see the first thing and then the second thing. So look, the first thing is B. Let's look at that for a second. The first thing is B. That is the first thing that we get. B is 216, all right? So we have A equals 221 and then B equals 221 minus five. That is 2016, 216. Then later on, we just modify A as four. And we console log A, and now we get four. So the previous value of two to one went away. It has been replaced by the A equals four. And again, I forgot this. And again, you did not say let here. You didn't declare it again you just updated A, okay? So as you can see, JavaScript executes your code from top to bottom. Cool, no? So first A is worth 221, here is 221, but then here it becomes a four, from top to bottom, okay? So this has been the first video into JavaScript variables. On the next one, we're going to discover something cool about variables. We're gonna talk about constants. 
So see you there. Bye-bye.